Hey, greetings, San Marcos Community Church and other people watching us from around the nation and around the world. We're here in Central Texas, and it's Sunday, April 26th, and we're going to show you how to do church in your living room. It's a do-it-yourself church service. going to be incredible. So I have my intro remarks here, and then uh, we're going to do a short message, and then uh, three songs right below. You just scroll down three songs and then how to do Bibles, how to do the Bible time, and then how to pray for each other. And it's going to be a great week. So I just want to thank you for continuing, uh, all you faithful givers, for continuing to send in your checks and online giving. We're doing great. We are uh, holding everything together, and it's just so encouraging to know that we have a strong community of faith who understands that discipleship is holistic, which includes giving, and you guys are doing a great job. So thank you for that. Uh, we've had a request this week that we haven't seen much of our associate pastor, John T. Zmigley. He's been the man behind the camera while I've been the guy in front of the camera, and some people are missing John, and he's a great preacher, so we decided let's let John bring the message here on April 26th, so he's going to do that, so come on out. John T., God bless you, buddy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Oh, it's great to see you guys this morning. Uh, well, for me, it's in the middle of the afternoon on a Wednesday, but for you guys, it's Sunday morning. Um, and I believe God gave me a really um, encouraging message for us today. Um, and I think when we kind of think about what's happening with the, the pandemic and, and the quarantine and everything that's happening, I think we have a tendency to have one of three reactions. One reaction could be you're, you're angry with God, you know, that he's doing something like this and you, you really don't understand it and it kind of makes you upset. And, and some people are upset with God. Others are just kind of hunkering down and ignoring God and just kind of just getting through this the best way that they can. And then other people are running to God and trying to figure out what's happening and, and really trying to get as much as they can from, from this whole situation. And when this whole thing is said and done, I want to be in the third category. I want to be one of the people who gets as much out of what God's doing in this time as possible. And, and the way that we do that is not by running from God or being mad at God, but it's by digging deeper into God and seeing what He's doing. And that's what I want to talk about today is digging deeper, digging deeper into who God is and what He's doing in this situation. And I want to use um, some, the, some of Paul's words in Colossians 2. So if you guys would open up to Colossians 2, um, those verses 1 through 7. And what's interesting in this book is that Paul wrote this book, while, this letter to the church in Colossae, while he was in quarantine. He was in prison, actually, and he was trying to lead a church from a distance, and he was writing a, a letter to them. And um, what he was writing to them was he actually never met them, but he was giving them encouragement on what they were doing, but also he was trying to give them guidance because there were some things that they were believing that weren't quite true about the gospel. And, and so that's what he is focusing in on here. So uh, Colossians 2, 1 through 7, it says this, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments, for though I am absent from you in, in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how you disciplined and, and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith is in Christ. So then, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. So overall, Paul's message here is to encourage his people to stay as close to Jesus as they possibly can during this time and to keep their faith. And without Paul physically being there, you know, in some ways this is a church that's kind of on their own to kind of figure out their faith in their daily lives. They don't have Paul to walk side by side with them to tell them the way that they should go. They have to rely on Jesus. 
And so they may have felt alone and isolated as one of the only churches in the region, the only people who truly believe in Jesus. They might have felt like day by day they had to figure out their faith and, you know, and what that looks like in their culture and what to believe and how to live it out. And so there's lots of differences between us and the first century church, but in some ways there's a lot of similarities too. You may find yourself in a situation today where you're trying to figure out your new normal and figure out your faith in this kind of chaotic situation that we're in and how to navigate that. And I think Paul gives us some good guidance on how to dig deeper into Jesus and, and calling us back to the basics. And that's what I want to talk about today. There's three main things I think that he focuses in on here in verses 6 and 7. He says, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And the first thing he says is that he encourages them to stay rooted in Jesus. No matter what they see or feel or experience, they are to stay rooted in what they originally taught in Jesus. And at this time, there was this thing called the Colossian heresy, which was kind of a combination of a lot of different belief systems that were happening in this culture. And they were kind of just kind of grab bag, throwing a bunch of different belief systems like, you know, angelic worship or the non-full supremacy of Jesus and, and other kinds of things and throwing that all into their religion and calling it good. But Paul says, no, go back to the basics. Go back to what Christ taught you because in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. And so he uses the word root here. Be rooted in Jesus. And it reminds me of Jesus' words when he said uh, in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And Jesus reminds them that without him, they're dead. They're a dead branch. And, you know, if you know anything about plants, they need water to survive, right? Any plant, any tree, any branch needs water and sustenance. And plants have root systems that dig deep into the ground to find that source of life. And, you know, if we use this analogy for our lives, we find life by our own root systems that we built. We find things that give us life. And what God has shown me lately through this pandemic situation is that I've been finding my life in places that are not Jesus in certain areas of my life. At the beginning of the year, I started this fast called Exodus 90. And it's basically where you give up um, eating sweets, uh, drinking sweet drinks, um, alcohol, um, all kinds of things, and it's, and it's living a totally kind of ascetic life. Cold showers, um, giving up video games and TV, and everything that kind of would give me sources of life, I completely cut off from on January 13th. And for 90 days after that, I was kind of going through withdrawals <laughs> of try. you know, it was kind of that moment where I was realizing, wow, I've been getting my life from a lot of sources that were not Jesus. And then at the, when this pandemic hit, it kind of hit even harder because not only could I not get my source of life from certain things like TV shows and movies, but I could also not, the social structures that I was b leaning on, my, my routine of my job got thrown in disarray. Everything kind of got thrown apart. And so the big question was, you know, when I'm faced with just me and Jesus, am I getting my full life from him or not? Am I rooted in him or am I rooted in all these other things? But I will say after those 90 days of being more rooted in Jesus and realizing that I was, was getting life from him, I slept better. I felt better. I was getting more joy because I was accessing the deep, deep wells of the wellspring of life of Jesus and not from these shallow sources of life. And so I think one thing that he's trying to do during this pandemic situation is ask us, you know, what areas of our lives are we getting sources of life from that aren't him? And we in, need to invite God to do some gardening, <laughs> to pull out the weeds that we have been, that have been in our gardens, um, pull out the things that don't belong, and ask him to do a deep work in this season, uh, things that he would never do otherwise, he's doing right now. He's rebuilding a root system in us right now. 
The second thing Paul says here is not just to be rooted in Christ, but to be strengthened in faith. He says, be strengthened in the faith as they were taught, as you were taught. And, and he says that once you're built in that root system, then you can start moving forward in the true faith of Jesus Christ. And at this time, the church of Col- uh, Colossae actually had two kind of, they were, they were a Gentile church, and so they were trying to figure out this Christianity thing, and they fell into one of two categories. One was this mystical polytheism where, you know, they had kind of indigenous religions, and, you know, a lot of them grew up in Greek and Roman cultures where they were worshiping gods, and Jesus was just one of the many gods that they worshiped. Or they fell into the category of the really traditional Jewish uh, culture where it was very focused on the law, focused on uh, legalism. And, and religion. And what Paul was saying to this church was neither of those are really right. <laughs> there is a third option. Because Jesus rose from the dead and, and, and resurrected, he gives us a third option to live a life that doesn't fit a certain category, but he's doing a new thing. He's building a new faith. And there was this third option that, that brought us a new humanity, a new way of living. And several weeks ago, this quarantine kind of presented us all with a new normal, a a third option, if you will, another way to live life. And I think if you're going through this with us, there's really one of two categories you could fall into. Some people suddenly just have have a ton of time opened up in their lives, and they're just bored all day. (laughs) And they have to, you know, they're filling it with whatever they can, whether that's Netflix and 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 naps and TV and just total boredom, and they have to fill the hours. Or you fall into another category where you just suddenly got a lot more busy, and everything's in disarray, and you're full of worry, and you're full of, of busyness. And I think in each of these categories, there's a temptation to hunker down and do whatever works for you. Find whatever root system that you have and go through it the best you can. Suddenly, you know, if you find yourself with a ton of time, you might have just defaulted to a bunch of movie watching, TV shows, and lethargy. If you're in the other camp and you got busy, you're probably really burdened with a lot of worry and a lot of, um, you know, extra work right now. And I think what God's doing is he's presenting us with a third option, a new way of life, where what used to work for you doesn't work anymore. And what used to work for our system doesn't work anymore. I mean, think about online church. Our church routine has gotten thrown into a disarray. It's a different normal. It's a new thing that God's doing. And I think what God wants us to do is he wants us to walk into that new thing and get as much as we can from him in new habits, new spiritual formations, and things that will change and strengthen our faith. And and God's doing that for me um, in that, I've always spent time with God every day, quiet time. I think it's the most important thing you can do as a Christian is spend time with Jesus. But what I heard him say to me during this pandemic situation was, I want to spend time with you in the mornings. And I am not a morning person. I've never been a morning person. And I just wake up slowly, and it's not my time. And I've always thought, you know, I spend time with God in the evening. That's my time. But God said, no, because this new situation is happening, I want you to spend time in the mornings with me. And I've been getting up half an hour early every single morning and spending time in Scripture and the Scriptures that are available on our website, and it's changing my whole day. I'm hearing from God orders that I need to do. He's telling me things that He didn't show me before when I would just meet with Him in the evenings, and when I meet with Him in the mornings, uh, he, he just gives me comfort. He gives me peace. Um, and, and that has led to other areas of my life that He's fixed and helped me with. And so that is a new normal for me. That's something that I'm trying to adapt and trying to receive that I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. This isn't just to to get through this time. It's a whole new normal that God's going to do for the rest of my life. And that's what Paul's saying here. He says, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. We have to go seek Him and find Him and find those things that He wants us to do during this time that will be with us for the rest of our lives. So whether you're a bored person (laughs) and you're trying to fill your time with whatever, or you're a busy person and you just can't stop letting that wheel turn, 
I would encourage you to ask God into that and say, God, I know you don't want me to just hunker down and get through this. I think you're trying to do a big new work in me and ask him what that is and spend time with him and and seek him and, and he will show you what you need to do to rebuild your faith with new daily practices and open up your time to him. And then the last thing, he encourages this church to be overflowing in thankfulness. When God moves us back to a place where we're rooted in him, we have new um, systems for how we're receiving him, he is going to build our, give us a heart full of thankfulness. And to look at an example of thankfulness, just look no further than Paul. The whole first chapter of Colossians is all about how thankful he is for this group of people that he's never met. He's in prison. He's probably been tortured. He is in quarantine away from people. He has no interaction with the outside world, and yet you can feel how thankful he is for these people and for the situation because he can see what God's doing in the greater scheme of things. He can see really what God is, what is, what God is doing and not what um, the world would say that, that is happening in the, in the flesh. And so he says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and for the love you had for all of God's people. Paul is thankful because he is focusing on all that God is doing, and his mind is set not on the things of this earth, but things of God, and therefore it's springing out in life and thankfulness. And please hear me, I'm not thankful that people are dying of a virus. I'm not thankful for the virus itself. But, but as believers, we also know that God is in total control. Jesus has all authority, and he is sitting right now at the right hand of God, and he has the final say, and he is at work despite this. And he's doing things in our world that we need to be tuned into. I think it's the easiest thing in the world to be negative right now. It's the easiest thing in the world to be fearful right now. And that's really the, the lowest hanging fruit that you can pull from. But in this digging deep, we have to dig deep into the thankfulness that we have access to because of God. Part of digging deep with God is asking what he's doing and seeing where he's moving because he is calling us to a deep place right now. He's not calling us to a shallow place where we see on the surface what's happening, but he's calling us to look into the deeper um, situation, and that's where we're going to find thankfulness. And so we thank God for the new normal. We embrace what he's doing. We thank him for what he's doing in the middle of this, Because if you think about it, this is one thing that the whole world is experiencing together. You know that God is doing something in the world right now that every single person, no matter what your age, your race, your demographic, your, your background, everyone is experiencing the same thing right now. And that is one way that we can all relate. And that's something that we can find God in and find ways to go deep with not just God but with people in. And so, you know, I teach at Texas State University, and I teach classes of hundreds of students, and I have had conversations with students that never would have happened if this crisis didn't happen. Um, I'm reaching deeper levels with conversations with people that never would have happened if we weren't pressed in this way. And God has laid on my heart a few people that I have texted and called and sent a random article to the other day, and somebody responded this morning telling me that it really just changed their life. They were totally on a not a good place with God, but this just article that I had sent them that I felt like God told me to send totally changed their outlook and really turned them a new leaf. And so we have that access right now to see what God is doing and to overflow with the thankfulness of what God is doing. And I just believe there's a depth to God that we can get right now. There's a depth with people that we can get right now. And there's a depth to understanding ourselves that we can get right now that is unique to this time and place, and God wants to use it. And so I just believe in general God is asking us to dig deeper with him. He is asking us, number one, to set our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the, the only person who has answers, and not on all the noise. He's asking us to set new uh, rhythms in our lives, new systems, and embrace what he's doing. And then he asks us to look at what he's doing and be thankful for what he's doing and embrace it and follow him in that. And so I want to pray for you today. 
And I want to pray for you, whether you're in any of those categories, I believe that God wants you to go deeper uh, during this time. So, Father God, I just want to thank you for the opportunity that we have to go deeper with you, Jesus. I want to thank you that you are at work, God. I want to pray for anybody um, that is watching this right now that, that finds that they are finding life in places that are not you. Um, their default is just to sit and watch movies all day. Their default is to just sit and nap or watch TV or just do something to fill the time, God. I pray, Lord, that you would call them to a deeper level, um, Lord, where they are rooted, not in those things, but in you, because I think that there's certain things you want to tell them. There's certain levels that you want to get with them that they're not going to get if they just fill it with busyness. Um, I also pray for people who just got a lot more busy and they're, they're full of chaos and full of worry, God. Would you please step into that, God? Would you calm us down? I think you're, you're calling some people to just slow down and stop and think, is this really what God wants me to do? Is this really where I'm finding life? And Lord, I just pray that you would build a new root system where we focus on you, Jesus. And secondly, I want to pray for people who who, who, who need new rhythms. Um, the things that would work for them before will not work in this season, God. So we embrace the change that you're doing, and we embrace the new systems that you're putting into place. I pray this week you would give us all new rhythms, Lord, um, where we can reach deep levels with you, whether that is daily time with you, uh, worship time with you, um, just seeking you in new ways, God, um, asking for maybe prophetic words for the people around us, um, um, giving us encouragement, God. I just pray for you to do a new work in us that you would strengthen our faith and we would not let it lag. Um, and then third, God, I pray, Lord, that you'd show us where we can be thankful. Give us opportunities to speak your word and your life to the people around us. Lord, that we would be thankful for what you are doing, that we can press into that and we give hope to a hopeless world right now, God. I pray that you'd empower us this week and we give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so now in your homes, in your small groups, what you're going to do is you're going to see below this message are three worship songs, and you're going to play those and worship together as a group. Then you're going to read a passage from Luke 24, 13 through 35. And basically, you're going to set a timer for about 8 to 12 minutes, and everyone's going to read silently those verses and spend time asking the Lord what God is saying about Himself what God is saying about humans. You're going to ask, what is the Lord saying to you personally? And then you're going to write down one I will statement about what God's asking you to do as a result of that. And then you're going to share with the group what, what God showed you, and then you're going to pray together. Pray for the person on your right. Then this week, you're going to be reading the Scripture readings, and those are going to be provided as well. So have a great week, and God bless you.